Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. And today we're going to go deep into the blood vessels so I can show you how niacin, through its famous flush, counters inflammation so successfully. Original flushing niacin, which is also known as vitamin B3, is well known for its ability to repair damage to the intima, which is the interior lining of our blood vessels. Part of the intima is a single-celled layer called the endothelium, and the endothelium, which lines all 60,000 miles of blood vessels in every person's body, can rightly be thought of as the largest organ in the body. Part of the intima is a lining of hair-like structures called the glycocalyx, and they facilitate the constant exchange of carbon dioxide, nutrients, and waste products. The endothelial cell's natural permeability enables this, but such permeability also invites unhealthy inflammation because pathogens, toxins, and LDL cholesterol, or the bad oxidized cholesterol, can easily penetrate the intima and lodge themselves in the space between the intima and the tunica media, which is the smooth muscular layer of the arterial wall. This alone can lead to arterial plaque formation and increased inflammation. The body responds to the arterial plaque by sending immune cells called monocytes to the wall's surface, which then release a flood of enzymes to destroy the plaque. At the same time, cytokines are released that increase inflammation even more, and this leads to the development of soft plaque, which is made of metabolic debris, oxidized LDL cholesterol, and decaying waste material from dead cells. This waste material and the metabolic enzymes that respond to it can weaken the arterial wall and rupture the soft plaque, and this can easily lead to a blood clot. And this is where niacin, and specifically original flushing niacin, also known as nicotinic acid, can really help. Because niacin that's used regularly can dissolve blood clots better than almost anything else, while also restoring damage to the intima, boosting HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, and also promoting proper oxygenation of the arteries. The flush is unquestionably niacin's most infamous effect, and while it looks and feels extremely inflammatory, the thermodynamic surge of heat that you're experiencing isn't just from the increased blood flow, but also the niacin's aggressive removal of body inflammation as heat on the skin's surface. This is very similar to why firefighters will often conduct a prescribed burn of a specific region, which is to effectively consume all the available fuel before the larger fire, which is the inflammation, arrives. The niacin flush can last for up to an hour, but it's usually around 15 to 30 minutes on average. And it feels like a severe itch, especially if you've taken it on an empty stomach. So, to avoid this, take your niacin with a full meal and start very low, like 25 milligrams to no more than 100 milligrams. And then give yourself a few weeks to maybe even a month to acclimate to this low beginner dose every day before progressing to any higher doses. Remember that the best results with niacin, for inflammation, immune health, or otherwise, are always seen with consistent, ongoing use. It's not uncommon to feel chilled after a niacin flush, and this chilling sensation is the body's normal cooling response to the thermodynamic removal of inflammation as heat through the skin. If this post-flush chill is too much for you, try reducing your niacin dose and or taking some astragalus when you first notice the chill. Astragalus is a natural source of selenium, which improves thyroid function and gives astragalus its famous warm-in sensation that is a perfect counterpoint to the post-flush chill. Although, if you're taking any blood thinning medications like warfarin, then it's best to avoid astragalus entirely. One major caution with taking niacin daily, especially in large doses, is that niacin can cause a buildup of uric acid, which, when untreated, can lead over time to gout. However, the bioflavonoid quercetin is well known for inhibiting xanthine oxidase, which is the specific metabolic enzyme needed to produce uric acid. So try pairing your niacin with 500 milligrams or more of quercetin every day, and definitely remember to exercise daily, as exercise dramatically lowers uric acid, while also maintaining insulin sensitivity. Both of these are critical if you're planning to work your way up to larger doses of niacin over time. With niacin, it's always best to start low and definitely take your time.
Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.